Hello, dear friends of function extensions. You have certain processes in TIA Portal that you regularly perform manually. TIA Portal Openness exists for this purpose, which can be used to automatically trigger functionalities in TIA Portal. And now with TIA Portal version 16, there are TIA add-ins that allow you to start this openness functionality directly from the TIA Portal surface. Let us show you how it works now. TIA add-ins offer the user a convenient way to extend the TIA portal functionality using the TIA Openness API. With add-ins, it's possible to use Openness functionality directly on specific user-selected elements in TIA portal without having to run external Openness applications. Add-ins can be executed from the context menu, which can be opened with a right-click for selected TIA portal elements. The developer of an add-in can define in which area of TIA portal and for which specific elements an add-in should be executable. The possible different areas are the project navigation view, the devices and networks view, the project library, the global libraries, and the version's control interface, short VCI. For the possible elements to which an add-in can be connected, the restrictions of openness apply. In order to integrate an add-in into TIA portal, it first has to be inserted as a .addin file into the directory named Addins located in the TIA portal installation directory. Now we can continue with the activation of the addin in TIA portal. The first thing that can be noticed is the new Addins tab below the Libraries tab in the right menu bar, which was added with version 16. In the upper part of the window, all addins that are stored in the addins folder and are displayed. In the lower half, detailed information like name, author, status and a description of the selected add-in are shown. Add-ins must first be activated in order to be executable. This is done by selecting the status attribute. After manually changing the status, a window appears in which the user of the add-in has to confirm the requested permissions of the add-in. If these permissions are not granted, the add-in cannot be activated. An example of this is the File I.O. permission which is needed to write in or read from files within the add-in code. After granting the requested permissions, the add-in is activated and can be executed in TIA Parallel. This demo add-in, for example, can be executed via the context menu of program blocks in the project navigation. When executing this add-in, only a window with some text is opened. This functionality, however, can be extended by the developer with Openness and other Windows functions. Here, the restrictions of the Openness API apply. It should be mentioned that multiple add-ins can be integrated and active into a portal at the same time. Let's now move to the development of TIA add-ins. For this, we can use the code of the demo add-in you just saw. An add-in consists of three main elements, two class files and an XML file. In the first class, the add-in provider, you define the area of the TIA portal surface in which you would like the add-in to be executable. This area is defined by the so-called provider. In this case, the project tree add-in provider is used. Thus, the add-in is attachable to elements in the project navigation view on the left side of TIA portal. These providers are also available for the devices and networks view, the project library, the global libraries and the version control interface. In the second class, the actual context menu add-in, you define the object type of TIA portal for which the add-in can be executed as well as the functionality of the add-in. The object type on which a certain action of the add-in can be executed is written between these angel brackets in the method call. In this case, the add-in can be executed on all objects in the project navigation that are accessible via Openness. The method call also contains the name of a specific add-in entry, a delegation method that is called when the entry is clicked in the context menu, and a delegation method that defines the display status of the entry in the context menu. The third, also mandatory file, is an XML file in which various data and information about the add-in are stored. This data is then displayed in the add-in overview in TIA portal. Among other things, the required permissions for this add-in are defined here. These permissions have to be confirmed by the add-in user after activation in TIA portal. 
The library files that are necessary for the development of an add-in can be found in the installation directory of TIA Portal. Now you've seen how to customize the TIA Portal interface using add-ins. At siemens.com slash TIA-add-ins, you can find ready-to-use add-ins for download and direct usage. If you want to develop your own add-ins, you will also find the source code for our existing add-ins and a template for a Visual Studio project. Feel free to post them directly on my LinkedIn channel. See you soon! Siemens. Ingenuity for life.